welcome to the Happier Marriage Podcast, a podcast for spouses longing to have a happier marriage so they can feel more connected, desired, and supported. Now, to start the show, here is your host, Anne Sherpa, licensed marriage and family therapist and certified relationship coach, Kingsley Grant. So welcome to today's episode of the podcast, and this is episode 84, and today's topic is the holy hustle, chasing God's purpose while building a thriving business. We're going to break down this whole idea of hustle and can those two words coexist, holy and hustle. With that said, let's come, let's dive in. I don't know about you, but I remember when the word hustle, hustle, hustle was the thing that we all need to be hustling. So many people at one point was pushing that idea and it felt so tiring because you feel like you had to be going, going, going. And if you were not, then you were not going to make it. I mean, actually, there were people who were proposing that idea that as a, a business person and someone who needs to be successful, the way to get that, it's almost like you never stop. You go, 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 go. And, you know, I was guilty of trying to follow that teaching that was so common. And there were people who were prominent people that you could watch and listen to, whether through a podcast or on video. And the idea was, man, you got to hustle. But I realized that, well, actually, let me put it this way. I was actually following that. And I recognized that it came at a price. Because sometimes we don't realize that the people who are pushing that idea are people who maybe don't have any responsibilities like you and I have. Maybe they do also have very screwed up relationships where their marriage is really on the rocks or it's not doing well. So sometimes we have to look at the source. Who are the people who are pushing this idea and where are they basically coming from? Man, I'm telling you, it's really was hard for me at one point. And I recognize it ate away at my own relationship or relationships because I felt that if I'm going to be successful as they were, then I've got to follow what they did. Because as you know, we've heard many times success leaves clues, right? Success leaves clues. And so the clue was if they were successful and they're saying you got to hustle, 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 then and guess what? We had to do the very same thing. So even when I use the word holy hustle, it's like almost like these two words should not go together. How can hustle then be holy? Is it such a thing? Well, if I was to look at scripture and I the person that comes to my mind right away was Apostle Paul. And the Apostle Paul would be one who would say, hustled very, very much throughout his ministry, throughout his life, and look at the impact he made. Let's take Jesus. Jesus was pretty much on the go. Look at all that he did in a three-year span, in a three, three-and-a-half-year span, the recorded stories we have in the Bible about Jesus. I mean, to have done all that he did, you could almost say, well, he was a person who hustled. So I want to give you the definition of the word from dictionary.com, the word hustle. It means to proceed or work rapidly or energetically, right? So in a sense, it's a good word. It's just the context that is being used in that makes it like a word you don't like. It feels like, ouch. It feels like a dirty word because of the people who have used it and the way they have used it for so very, very long. So when I talk about holy hustle, I'm speaking about something different in the context of how do you align your faith, your family, and your business where all three thrives and you don't feel this pressure and stress and strain in your relationships and feeling guilty or feeling resentment, whether to your work or to your family, because one thing 
it's getting in the way of what it is you feel like you've been called to do. So how do we do that? Well, that's what we're going to talk about in this episode today. And we're going to dive right in right after this. So the big question is this. How is it possible that you have a happier marriage when you feel like you've tried everything? Your spouse isn't making an effort. You're exhausted. You feel like giving up. Or there's so much hurt that's taken place between you and your spouse. That is the question, and this podcast will give you the answers. So let me then begin by explaining what I mean by the holy hustle, right? I mean, it's, it's how you're going to seek success in business while you are prioritizing your faith and your family values, because I know that's a big thing for you. I know ultimately that's what you want to do, right? And so I recognize that if we're going to do that, it's going to require intentional alignment and, and balancing of these aspects if we're going to create a lasting legacy. You know, I came from a, a a family where my dad, you know, I grew up in Jamaica. My dad hustled. I mean, if there's somebody who hustled was my dad. He would leave home early in the morning and he would be on the streets driving. He drove a, a passenger van. And in Jamaica, we, we would call those hustlers, right? Because you got to get to the passenger really quickly and you got to get them on your van, your bus, and you've got to get them to their destination very quickly. They depended on that. And so you got to be known as a person who could get them from point A to point B on time. Because many of these people who were getting on your bus were people who are going to work, going to school, go had to be at the market at a certain time, and you better be able to get them there. And my dad, that was a promise he made. I mean, his bus was called Faith, right? Because he was a man of faith and he preached it. He lived it. He taught it. And so he really wanted people to know that you could trust him and he had a faith component. And so my dad was a man who hustled. Now, my dad did not make a ton of money, but he made enough so we could live a very reasonable, I would say, quality life, not a rich life. But in the people that we grew up with in a community, we grew up in a rural community. A lot of a lot of the people there were were um, into agriculture, right? So they were farmers, and as you know, it took a while for farming to um, establish itself and for it to produce anything. So my dad, truly in that neighborhood, was looked upon to be very successful because my dad made his living through what I just described. And my dad went on to have not just one, but two buses. And he had those on a certain route that he would run from morning, Monday through Saturday. I mean, my dad very rarely took any time off for us. And and I talk about that in many other podcasts about what that meant to us as a family. But it was an intentional, right? So it was intentional for my dad. But my dad also, and you may have heard me mention this, I'm a preacher's kid. My dad he also was a pastor. He had a church and he had to run the church and prepare for every Sunday and maybe sometimes midweek to have a, a service where he was a pastor and to preach. You know, whether he and my mom would sometime, my mom would take the chance, give her every now and then give an opportunity for she would to bring the word. But my dad was the main person that did that. And so he had to then, of course, operate with integrity as a a bus owner and a driver and a you know a person who had a business because he was looked at as a man of faith. So he had to incorporate and integrate um, biblical principles in his business on a regular basis, in how he made decisions and how he interacted with people. But I can tell you, it's a cutthroat business out there. And so my dad, even though he was that way, he had behaved in some ways that sometimes I'm I'm got I'm worried because I said, my, man, you know, what if somebody didn't like my dad, you know, charging a certain amount of money and they want to pay him, then what does he do? And my dad would basically get in your face. He would not be physical, but he would say, hey, I do, I gave you a, a ride and not gave you a ride, but I we entered a transaction, a contract that got on my bus. I expect you to pay me at the end. And sometimes we would begin to get wiser and collect the payment before the people got to where they were going because he had calculated how much it's going to cost 
And so you pay up first. And so that was my dad's practice to make sure he gets get paid. But I remember it was also a very cutthroat, bi- cutthroat business because my dad, I remember one time he was on his way to another city, right? It was Kingston and he was on his way to the city and he, somebody um, claimed that my dad had cut them off. Now, I don't know the story. I wasn't there, but long story short, my dad was run, you know, these people um, cut my dad off and stopped before him, jumped out of the car and they pulled him out of his vehicle because he had to stop and they beat him. They beat my dad in, in a bloody pulp where he had to go to the hospital and he was there for several days recuperating. Long story short, thank God my dad recuperated. But I believe that my dad was never the same, you know, physically because later on in life he died from a stroke. And, we, you know, I believe that there was something had to be done. Something was was, was uh, connected to that, you know, and I don't know for sure, but I still believe that. But my point is that that my dad had to integrate biblical um, practices because even those people who did that were, ca- were caught and arrested. My dad taught us about forgiveness, how to forgive. Again, is a whole idea of legacy, leg- legacy building. We want to leave a legacy for in you know um, build legacy in our faith, our family, and our business. And my dad was doing his best to do that. Now, my dad, you know, the thing that I would say that I would hold against my dad it was that he wasn't there for us as children as much as we would like him to. And I know that's what you don't you want to do something different. And I want to suggest and encourage and emphasize and strongly say to you. Do something different because I can tell you it impacted me and our my siblings in a way that we talk about, but we've forgiven our dad. We recognize that he was doing the best he could with what he had for the time and it was for our own good. But still it did impact us in a negative way, in many, many ways, because of course he was not there. He provided uh, a covering. He provided uh, food on the table. He provided clothes on our back. He provided education as best as he could. So we gets, you know, I, I have to be grateful for that. But at the same time, as a father, as a man, as a husband, he had a, was absent from many, many things in our lives. I played soccer. My dad never came to one of my soccer games. You know, he didn't see it as a priority. Um, school and education, he wanted us to do well and would push that, push academics, because he didn't have the education that he wished he did. My dad had to drop out of school because his own parents, you know, my, his dad had died at an early age. He was the first boy, and he had to, you know, um, drop out of school and basically get, uh, you know, a very, very basic education. So he made certain that we had a good education. So as a family, we would he would instill that into our lives, but also prayer. We would make sure at dinner time, we would make sure we had prayer at dinner time. And every Sunday morning, we had to get up very early to have a, you know, family prayers and read the Bible. My dad was very big on that because, again, he wanted to instill in us the importance of, of uh, biblical principles to memorize scriptures and talk about scriptures as a family. Many times he had to wake us up early because we had to do family devotion. Now, I don't necessarily advocate and push that on, uh, you know, for on you, because as a father, I didn't do that. I didn't strongly, because I didn't want my kids to grow up and res- resent the very thing that I want them to embrace, and that is a love of God and love of Bible. And so, thank God I chose to do some things different than my dad did, because, again, because family is very important. And so, if you're going to then be hustling, make certain that this balance is taking place. And I know it's very difficult to have this, you know, we talk about work-life balance. It's very difficult. It's it's a struggle at times. But listen, it's important to find a way to make sure your family is prioritized. Because if it's not, you may end up losing them. And this is not what you want to do. So we've got to find some strategies to maintain a healthy work-life balance. And how do we prioritize our family? Spend time with them. I failed in many ways as I look back in my life. There's times I believe I could have been there for my own children. And I didn't because, again, I was in this hustle mindset. But I thank God I was able to recover from that um, enough where my children today were adults. Still, we have great relationship. And I thank God for that. We've got to also remember this, that it's we're aligning our faith, family, and business because we want to create a unified legacy. Right. So we've got to be able to put all three things. Now, as I said before in a past episode, that it may seem counterintuitive because a priority means one thing have to take priority over another. 
But I find that we're going to align as all three because we've got to place emphasis and allocate time and energy into all three. So it's in a sense, we raise a priority at certain times. So it is alternating between these three things, faith, family, and business, and making certain that they're all given the priority they need, obviously not at the same time, but they're given the priority they need because that is how we're going to be able to be successful at this. So when I talk about the holy hustle then, again, it's about pursuing success in business while honoring God and prioritizing our family. So I want to encourage you to be intentional in aligning your faith and your family and your business because it's about building a legacy that reflects your values and your beliefs. Again, I go back to my dad. I thank God that he left us a legacy because, because of what already instilled in us. I'm here today passing on this to you. So I want to encourage you then to make certain that you work on that, especially as this year is early in the stages of stages of this year in 2024. Make certain that you push yourself and make this a priority as you align your faith, your family, and your business for a last, lasting legacy. I want to say thank you for taking the time to listen. Please share this podcast with at least one other person. Find another family, another husband, um, another man, uh, somebody you know who could benefit from this and encourage them to listen to the podcast. Share this with them, subscribe. And if you need to reach out to me, if I can help you in any way, I'm looking to raise up a number of husbands and um, this movement called Strong Husband um, Brotherhood, the Strong Husbands, uh, Strong Husband Brotherhood. And if you're interested in that, please reach out to me. Let me know if you're a wife listening, let your husband know, and you can DM me, direct message me on, on um, Instagram or on Facebook, or just use, you know, reach out to me. Um, any social media platform, you can find me at Kings Legrand, but direct message me on Instagram or Facebook is a quick way to get to me. Um, and or even on Twitter. Okay. Um, formerly called Twitter is now called X. So I want to say thank you for taking the time to listen. May God bless you as you pursue this whole idea, the holy hustle in leaving a legacy or building a legacy in faith, family, and in your business. We all three can be aligned. Why not make this the year of that alignment? God bless you and look forward to seeing and hearing from you very, very soon. Until then, may God bless you. May his peace rest upon you and give you the grace and the strength to do this alignment and this holy hustle. God bless. We've come to the end of another exciting show. And if you enjoyed this podcast, one, make sure you give this show a rating and review. Two, subscribe to the show to get all new releases. And three, get your complimentary copy of the Five Secrets to a Happier Marriage ebook at kingsleygrant.com slash HMS ebook. Again, it's kingsleygrant.com slash HMS ebook. See the link in the show notes. Do it today. Don't delay. Thanks so much for listening and make sure you tell one other spouse about this show or better yet, share it with them. Until next time, may the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May he turn his face towards you and give you his peace both now and forever.